A large body of Western Chalukya literature in Kannada language was produced during the reign of the Western Chalukya Empire CE in what is now southern India. This dynasty, which ruled most of the Western Deccan in South India is sometimes called the Kalyani Chalukya dynasty after its royal capital at Kalyani now and sometimes called the later Chalukya dynasty for its theoretical relationship to the 6th century Chalukya dynasty of Badami. For a brief period 1162 the Kalachuris of Kalyani, a dynasty of kings who had earlier migrated to the Karnataka region from central India and served as vassals for several generations, exploited the growing weakness of their overlords and annexed the Kalyani. Around 1183, the last Chalukya scion, Someshvara IV, overthrew the Kalachuris to regain control of the royal city. But his efforts were in vain, as other prominent Chalukya vassals in the Deccan, the Hoysalas, the Kakatiyas, and the Sunas destroyed the remnants of the Chalukya power. Kannada literature from this period is usually categorized into the linguistic phase called Old Kannada. It constituted the bulk of the Chalukya court's textual production and pertained mostly to writings relating to the socio religious development of the Jain faith. The earliest well known writers belonging to the Shaiva faith are also from this period. Under the patronage of Kalachari king Bayala II, whose prime minister was the well-known Kannada poet and social reformer Basavana, a native form of poetic literature called vachana literature lit. utterance, saying, or sentence, proliferated. The beginnings of the vachana poetic tradition in the Kannada-speaking region trace back to the early 11th century. Kannada literature written in the shampoo meter, composed of prose and verse, was popularized by the Shalukyan court poets. However, with the advent of the Virashaiva lit. Brave devotees of the god Shiva, religious movement in the mid 12th century, poets favored the native tripadi, three-line verse composed of eleven ganas or prosodic units, hadagaba, song poem, and free verse meters for their poems. Important literary contributions in Kannada were made not only by court poets, noblemen, royalty, ascetics, and saints who wrote in the marga, mainstream style, but also by commoners and artisans, including cobblers, weavers, cowherds, and shepherds who wrote in the desi folk style. These vachana poets called vachanakaras revolutionized Kannada literature, rejecting traditional themes that eulogized kings and noblemen, and writing didactic poems that were closer to the spoken and sung form of the language. In addition to hundreds of male poets, over 30 female poets have been recorded, some of whom wrote along with their husbands. Topic. Background Topic. Political developments Towards the end of the 10th century, a new Karnataka dynasty, called the Western Chalukyas, had come to power by overthrowing the Rashtrakuta Empire of Manyaheta modern Malkt in the Gulbarga district, Karnataka. Their earliest inscription is dated to c. 957 and is ascribed to a subordinate ruler, Tailapa II of Tardavadi, later to become the founding king of the empire, in the Bijapur district, Karnataka. An inscription from c. 967 suggests that an unsuccessful rebellion was staged by Chattadeva, a local king belonging to the Chalukya family, with the help of the Kadamba chief from the temple town Banavasi. These events, however, paved the way for Tailapa II to launch a successful rebellion against the Rashtrakuta king Karka II with the help of the Kadamba chief of Hangul. A century before these political developments, the age of great Sanskrit and Prakrit epics and classics had come to an end. This productive period had made available a vast corpus of literature that could be expressed in the local language of Kannada. Kannada, which had flourished both as a language of political discourse and literature in the Rashtrakuta court, found enthusiastic support from the Chalukya kings. The influential Jains, who according to historian A.S. Altakar may have comprised 30% of the population, not only dominated the cultural landscape of 9th and 10th century Karnataka, but were also eager to encourage literature in the local language. According to Professor S.N. Sen, a research fellow at the Indian Council of Historical Research, Kannada literature under the Shalukas reached a perfection of form. Scholars Sheldon Pollock and Jan Hoban have claimed that 90% of the Shalukyan royal inscriptions are in Kannada, a virtual displacement of Sanskrit as the language of courtly discourse. <laughs> Mainstream literature 
for a few centuries after Kavirajamarga, royal path for poets. C. 850, the earliest available Kannada literary work, Jain writings had adhered to Sanskritic models that had been recognized by the state as the path for future Kannada writers, while relegating native poetic forms compositions such as Chitana and Badande to subordinate status. The stranglehold that the Sanskritic models had over Kannada literature is best exemplified by Rana's lexicon Ranakanda 990, where native day-to-day -day Kannada words had been translated into Sanskrit. This implied that the pure form of the local language was not viewed as equal to Sanskrit, from the cosmopolitan viewpoint. Kannada writings by Jain authors thus used impressive Sanskrit-derived verses interspersed with prose to extol the virtues of their patron kings, who were often compared to heroes from the Hindu epics. While Adhikavi Pampa, Pampa Bharata, 941, compared his patron, the feudatory Shalukya king Arakesari, to Pandava prince Arjuna, in Vikramarjuna Vijaya, his version of the Hindu epic Mahabharata, Rana 983, found it suitable to compare his patron, King Satishraya, to Pandava prince Bhima. <laughs> Folk literature The mainstream literary style was to lose popularity during the mid-12th century Kalachari rule, due to the rise of revolutionary notions about the social and cultural order. The Virashivas, acting in protest, used the pure form of Kannada language in their poems, moreover, they encouraged writers from lower castes to participate and completely eliminated themes that had been considered formal by the king and the monastery. Thus, written in native meters, in a language close to the spoken form of Kannada, the Vachana poems gained mass appeal. A new religious faith was thereby propagated by the Virashivas whose ascendancy is called the Virashiva movement, and their communicative genre, the Vachana. While the Vachana poetry is generally categorized as a part of the pan-Indian bhakti devotional literature, such generalizations tend to disguise the very esoteric and anti-bhakti positions taken by many Vachanakaras. The origin of the Virashaiva ideology and the beginnings of their poetry is unclear. According to D.R. Nagaraj, a scholar on literary cultures in history, modern scholars tend to favor two broad views, integrationist and indigenous. The integrationists, such as L. Basavaraju, trace the source of Vachana poetic tradition to the Sanskrit Upanishad scriptures and the Agama doctrine, though this does not explain why the movement did not blossom earlier or in the neighboring Telugu-speaking region where radical Shaiva sects were known to be active. The indigenists, such as Chidananda Murthy, M. M. Kalaburgi and G. S. Shivarudrapa, propose a native Karnataka origin of the poetry, though they are yet to fully explain its unique nature. Other developments At about this time, adding to pressure from the popularity of the Vachana canon in the northern Kannada-speaking region, the noted Hoysala king Vishnuvardhana of the southern Kannada-speaking region converted from Jainism to the Hindu sect of Vaishnavism. The popularity of Ramanujacharya's philosophy had spread in the Hoysala lands and Sri Vaishnavism, a sub-sect of Vaishnavism, was in the ascendant. By the late 13th century, the Virashaiva writers, who were by now writing allegorical inscriptions and biographies of famous Vachanakaras of the 12th century, were in stiff competition with the Jains. The earliest attempts by the Jains to veer away from traditional Puranic philosophical themes of renunciation are seen in the writings of Hoysala writers Nemakandra and Andeya. Lilavati Prabhandam, a novel written by Nemakandra on the topic of love, erotica, and of the victory of Kamadeva God of love over his arch-rival Shiva, is the first among such writings. It was followed by Kabhagara Kava, Poet's Defender, 1215 by Andeya, also a work depicting a war between Kamadeva and the god Shiva. Despite these efforts, the Jain literary influence was to recede in the coming decades and centuries, being relegated mostly to the coastal Kannada-speaking region. Works of enduring quality were still produced by maverick authors such as Ratnakaravarni though their numbers were fewer. Contemporaneous to these developments, Nagavarma II wrote his Kannada grammar Karnataka Bhashabhushana, Ornament of Karnataka Language, 1042 or 1145. A milestone in the history of Kannada literature, it helped consolidate the language as competitor to established languages such as Sanskrit and Prakrit, bringing the local language within the realm of literary cosmopolitanism. 
Writing a Kannada grammar in Sanskrit language was essential to Nagavarma II, a subtle rebuttal to Sanskritic scholars of the day who may have considered Kannada a language of the common man and its grammar as underdeveloped. In addition to the Chalukya patronage, Kannada poets and writers of this period were popular in the courts of neighboring kingdoms of the western Deccan. The Hoysalas, the southern Kalachuris, the Sunas, the Gangas and the Silharas are some of the ruling families who enthusiastically used Kannada in inscriptions and promoted its literature. <laughs> Kannada writings Jain court literature <inaudible> Age of Rana The late 10th century was a period of consolidation for the fledgling empire. Founding King Tailapa II and his successor, King Satishraya, warred against their neighbours, the Shilharas of South Konkan, the Chalukyas of Gujarat, the Paramara of Central India and the Chola dynasty of Tanjore. Unaffected by these political developments, Kannada literature continued to flourish in the royal court. The foremost writer of this period was Rana, who was born to a family of Bengal sellers in the town of Mudhole. Rana is considered by historians K.A. Nilakanta Sastri and Sailendra Nath Sen as one of the three gems of Kannada literature, along with his seniors, Adhikavi Pampa and Sri Pana. Rana became the court poet of King Tailapa II and King Satishraya. In his early days, he was also patronized by the well known Ganga minister Chavundaraya. Rana is famous for writing Ajitha Purana, 993, which recounts the life of the second Jain Tirthankar Ajitanatha. However, it is in his magnum opus, the work Sahasa Bhima Vijaya, Victory of Bold Bhima, also called Gata Yuta or Conflict of Clubs, 982, that he reaches his zenith of poetic grace while describing the conflict between Pandava Bhima and Kaurava Prince Duryodhana in his Jain version of the Hindu epic Mahabharata. Unlike Pampa, who glorifies Arjuna and Karna in his writing, Rana eulogizes his patron King Satishraya and favorably compares him to Bhima, whom he crowns at the end of the Mahabharata war. He calls Bhima's adversary Duryodhana Mahanubhava, a great person. The work contains some of the earliest examples of elegiac verses called Shoka Gita or Karama Gita in the Kannada language, noted among which is one piece that describes the heart-rending lamentation called Karuna Rasa or sentiment of pathos of Duryodhana on seeing the slain bodies of his brother Dushasana, his inseparable friend in joy and sorrow, Karna, and Arjuna's valorous son Abhimanu. The effect given to the writing, the language, the diction and the style maintained throughout the narration has earned Rana a place among the most notable authors of Kannada literature. Ascribed also to Rana is the earliest available dictionary in Kannada language called the Ranakanda 990, of which only 11 verses still exist. His other notable writings were the Chakarasvaracharita and the Parashuramacharitha. According to historian Suryanath Kamath, the latter work, which is now lost, may have been a eulogy of Chavundaraya, whom the poet admired. For his literary contributions, the title Kavi Chakravathi, Emperor Among Poets, was bestowed upon Rana by his patron king. Another notable writer from the close of the 10th century, Nemakandra, wrote the Kaviraja Kunjara and Lilavati c. 990 with Prince Kavdarpa Deva of Jantipura modern Banavasi, Karnataka and Princess Lilavati as the protagonists of the latter poem. Other writers from the close of the 10th century whose works are now lost but have been praised by the Chalukya minister Durgasimha 1031 are Kavitavilaza patronized by King Jayasimha II, Madiraja, Chadrabhata, Kanameya and Manasya. Inscriptions such as the Kupator and Haveri records eulogize popular writers such as Harivarma 1070 and Narayana Deva respectively. Early secular writings According to Kannada scholar R. Narasimacharya, despite the production of some important secular writings, repeated Chola invasions into Kannada lands in the 11th century may have adversely affected literary production. This situation was brought about by intense competition between the western Chalukyas and their arch-rivals, the Cholas of Tanjore. Among notable writings, Chandraraja's Madanatalaka, forehead ornament of passion 
1025, written in the Shampu meter, is the earliest available work on erotica in the Kannada language and an adaptation of the Sanskrit Kama Sutra by Vatsyayana. The narration is a dialogue between the patron and his wife in Posakanada, the most modern Kannada in usage at the time. He was under the patronage of Mashiraja, feudatory of King Jayasimha II also called Jagadekamala I. Sridharacharya, a Jain Brahmin patronized by King Someshvara I also called Avamala or Trelakimaya showed his ability to write on scientific subjects in Jatakatalaka the earliest available writing on astrology in Kannada, citing the Sanskrit astronomer Aryabhata. His other work is the lost Chandraprabha Charite, on Bell's Letra, Chavundaraya II, a Shaiva Brahmin, Brahmin devotee of the god Shiva by faith and a protege of King Jayasimha II, wrote Lokopakara c. 1025, in the Shampu meter. It is the earliest available encyclopedia in the Kannada language, written at times with a poetic touch. It comprises twelve chapters and has found popularity in later references as well. The work is on various topics such as daily life, astronomy, astrology and forecasting of events based on the Indian calendar Panchanga Phala, sculpture, construction of buildings Vastu Vachara and reservoirs Udakargala, omens, divination of water, preparation of medicine from herbs and plants Vrikshayurveda, general medicine Vedia, perfumery, cookery and toxicology Vishavadia. Mentioned in this book is the popular South Indian dish idli and its preparation by soaking urad dal black gram in buttermilk, grinding it to a fine paste, and mixing with spices and the clear water of curd. Durgasimha, the Sandhi Vigrahi Minister of, War and Peace of King Jayasimha II wrote the well-known Panchatantra, the Five Stratagems, 1031, in shampoo style, basing it on Ganadya's Paishachi language original Brihatkatha. This fable is the first adaptation of the original into a vernacular language of India. Containing 60 fables in all, 13 of which are original, each is summarized by an ethical moral based on a Jain tenet. Durgasimha also authored the Karnataka Banachatantra, the earliest available commentary in the Kannada language, giving a brief commentary on all the Sanskrit verses he quoted in the Panchatantra. Around this time, Jayakirti c. 1000 to 1050, a Kannada language theorist who considered the rules of prosody to be the same for Sanskrit and Kannada, wrote the Chandanusasana. There were other notable writers from the latter part of the 11th century. Shantinatha, patronized by King Someshvara II, wrote the poem Sukumaracharita in c. 1068. Nagavarmacharya, a Brahmin Advaita saint of Balagavi, who was patronized by King Udayatidya, a vassal of Shalukya King Someshvara II, wrote Chandrachudamani Sataka c. 1070 in the Sataka line verse meter. In this centum of verses, where each ends with the term Chandrachudamani, as another name of the god Shiva, the author treats on Viragya ethics of renunciation. Other writers whose works are considered lost but have been referenced in contemporary writings are Gunachandra and Gunavarma. Gunachandra, who was admired by King Someshvara II, also called Bhuvanika Mala, wrote Parsvabudaya and Maganadisvara. Gunavarma, who earned the honorific Bhuvanika Veera, a title befitting a warrior rather than a poet, is mentioned by grammarian Kashiraja as the author of Harivamsa. His title identifies him with a Ganga prince called Udayaditya who was a minister and general under Shalukya king Someshvara II. Other writings ascribed to the author are Pushpadanta Purana and Devachandra Prabha Stotra. <laughs> Vikrama era The 12th century heralded an age of peace and prosperity. Cultural and literary developments received impetus during the rule of King Vikramaditya VI, a patron of the fine arts. The king, who ascended the throne in 1076 and ruled for 50 years occupies a pride of place in the history of Karnataka. His reign marks the end of the use of Saka Varsha Indian calendar, the Saka era, in Chalukya inscriptions and the start of Vikrama Varsha Vikrama era. His court was adorned with some of the most well-known writers of Kannada and Sanskrit literature. Nyasena, whose writings are dated by the scholars D.R. Nagaraj and Sheldon Pollock to the 10th century, and by E.P. Rice and R. Narasimacharya to c. 1112, wrote the Dharmamritha, a book containing 15 stories that belong to the genre of fable and parable. Well known among these stories teaching about Jain tenets are Yajnadatta and the Mongoose, Kapalika and the Young Elephant and 
serpent, tiger, monkey and the goldsmith who had fallen in the old well." The writing is one of intense self-interrogation where the author criticizes the beliefs of all contemporaneous religions while decrying the contamination in the original Jain beliefs due to external cultural influences, such as the practice of violent and bloody rituals and the caste system. Brahmashiva, the court poet of King Vikramaditya VI, earned the title Kavichakravarti, Emperor among poets, from his patron for his writing Samayapariksha, Analysis of the Doctrine, c. 1125. In this philosophical writing, containing touches of propagandist satire and humor, the author seeks to prove the virtues of Jainism superior to all other contemporary religions. Brahmashiva portrays contemporary life and beliefs of the people of the Kannada-speaking region. He criticizes Hinduism and the conversion of a Jain temple originally dedicated to the Tirthankar Chandraprabha in Kolhapur into a Hindu temple deifying the goddess Mahalakshmi. He expresses reservation regarding the existence of religious cosmopolitanism within a household where family members followed multiple faiths. The author is concerned about the eroding popularity of Jainism in southern India due to the rising popularity of the Virashaiva movement. Prince Kurtavarma, a younger brother of King Vikramaditya VI, wrote Govadiya, cattle medicine, the earliest available writing in Kannada on veterinary science, which mixes medicine and magic. After the death of Vikramaditya VI, his successors, Someshvara III and Jagadhikamala II, continued to support poets and writers. Karnapariya's account of the life of the 22nd Tirthankar Naminatha, the Naminatha Purana c. 1145 in Shampu meter, includes details of the Hindu epic Mahabharata and of the god Krishna from a Jain outlook. Jagadala Samanatha's Karnataka Kalyanakarika 1150, a translation of the Sanskrit writing Kalyanakarika by Pujyapada, is the earliest writing on medicine in Kannada. It prescribes an entirely vegetarian and non-alcoholic diet. Topic. Consolidation of grammar Among available works on Kannada grammar, a part of Kavirajamarga 850 forms the earliest framework. The occurrence of the term pravacharayar in some contexts of the writing may be a reference to previous grammarians or rhetoricians. Though Nagavarma II is credited to be the author of the earliest exhaustive Kannada grammar, the author mentions his predecessors, Sankavarma and Nagavarma I the extant Chandambudi. Ocean of Prosody, c. 984, as path makers of Kannada grammar. The exact time when grammarian Nagavarma II lived is debated by historians. Until the discovery of Vardhamana Puranam, Life of Varadama, c. 1042, written in Kannada by an author who goes by the same name, it was broadly accepted by scholars including E. P. Rice, R. Narasimacharya, and K. A. Nilakanta Sastri that Nagavarma II lived in the mid 12th century 1145 and was also the Katakacharya poet laureate of Chalukya king Jagadhikamala II. However, of late, the Encyclopedia of Indian Literature, published by the Sahitya Akademi, and scholars D. R. Nagaraj and Sheldon Pollock concur that Nagavarma II lived in the mid 11th century and was the poet laureate of Chalukya king Jayasimha II, who had the epithet Jagadekamala. Lord of the World. Irrespective of when Nagavarma II lived, it is accepted that few scholars in the history of Kannada literature made important contributions in as many subjects as he did. His writings on grammar, poetry, prosody, and vocabulary are standard authorities and their importance to the study of the Kannada language is well acknowledged. Among his available writings, the historically important Kavyavalakana, Treatise on the Art of Poetry. On grammar, poetics and rhetoric is considered path-breaking and contains all the essentials of Kannada grammar. The first section of the book is called Sabdayasamriti and contains five chapters dealing with euphonic combinations, nouns, compounds, nominal derivatives and verbs respectively. It is based on earlier works by the Sanskrit grammarians Dandan and Bamaha. The Karnataka Bhashabhushana, a consolidated and exhaustive Kannada grammar written by Nagavarma II in the Sanskrit language, follows the fundamental framework of the Katantra school of Sanskrit grammar. For his contribution to Kannada grammar, Nagavarma II earned the honorific Sarvavarma, the name of the noted Sanskrit grammarian of the Satavahana era. His Abhidana Vastakosa, Treasury of Significations. A lexicon, gives Kannada equivalents of nearly 8,000 Sanskrit words and is considered an achievement which gave Kannada language considerable footing in the world of Sanskrit literary dominance. 
Modern Kannada poet Govinda Pai proposed that the author of Karnataka Bhashabhushana was a different Nagavarma who belonged to the mid 12th century. <laughs> Bhakti literature Early poets The meteoric rise of Virashaivism a religious sect which preaches devotion to the god Shiva, also called Lingayatism. In caste-ridden 12th century Karnataka has historic significance because it involved commoners from the lower strata of society, people who had hitherto been denied access to even basic education. The essence of the movement, also seen in the resulting Vachana poems, was the rejection of temple-based ritual worship and the hegemony of mainstream Sanskritic texts and scriptures. The movement encouraged a monotheistic belief in the god Shiva which, according to Kannada scholar H.S. Shiva Prakash, is a possible influence of the 63 Nainmars poets devoted to the god Shiva, 5th-10th century of the Tamil-speaking region. The followers of the faith prayed not to a conventional image of a god but rather wore a linga symbol of the god Shiva on their body. The beginnings of the Vachana poetry called Vachana Sahitya, Vachana literature, or Anubhava Sahitya, mystic literature, and sometimes Sharana Sahitya, literature of the devotees. A unique form of expression in the Kannada language, can however be traced back to the 11th century. Names of three poets from the 11th century and some of their poems are available. Madara Chennaya, a cobbler turned saint, is considered by H.S. Shiva Prakash as the first Vachana poet, and was held in high esteem by latter day poets of the 12th century, including Basavana. Only ten of Chennai's poems, expressing his resentment of the caste system in metaphors taken from the cobbler's trade, are extant today. Dohara Kakaya is the second poet. A Dalit by birth, his six available poems are confessional in nature, a theme seen in the later poems of Basavana. Devara Dasamaya or Jedera Dasamaya, 1040, is better known because a hundred and fifty of his poems are available. Written in a deft and concise language of proverbs and metaphors, his poems encourage monotheistic belief in the god Shiva. Dasamaya's wife Dougal qualifies as Kannada's first women poet, though only a few of her poems are available. <inaudible> Rebel literature In the mid-12th century, the Kalachuris successfully warred against their overlords, the western Chalukyas, and annexed their capital Kalyani. During this turbulent period lasting three decades 1153 to 1183, Virashaivism gained popularity. According to H.S. Shiva Prakash, the Kalachari period is one of the high points of medieval Kannada literature. Basavana or Basava, a social reformer and the prime minister of Kalachari king Bayala II, is generally regarded as the inspiration behind this movement. Alama Prabhu, Chenabasava, Sadarama, Akka Mahadevi, and Kandugoli Kashiraja are other well-known poets among several hundred in this cadre, a center of religious discussions called Anubhava Mantapa Hall of Experience. in Kalyani became the conclave where devotees gathered to discuss their mystic experiences. Here, they expressed their devotion to Shiva in simple poems called Vachanas. These were spontaneous utterances of rhythmic, epigrammatical and satirical prose emphasizing the worthlessness of riches, rituals and book learning. Many of these poems are anonymous, but the authors are identifiable by the unique divine name of the god Shiva that is invoked in the poem. Basavana Born to Brahmin parents in the town of Basavana Bhagawadi, Basavana rejected the Upanayanam ritual thread ceremony and left home for Kudaisangama, a holy place at the confluence of the Krishna and Ghataprabha rivers in Bagalkot district, Karnataka. According to historian P.B. Desai, it was here, during his tutelage under the saint Ashanyaguru, that Basavana had visions of his life's purpose. The life of Basavana marks a milestone in the history of Karnataka state, India. A towering personality, his zeal and socio-cultural achievements in the realm of peace and equality of mankind have brought about enduring changes in society. Information about his life and achievements come from the many Kannada writings, the earliest of which were written just after his death. Hoysala poet Harihara's Basavarajadevara Rigali is the first known biography on Basavana. 
Vijayanagara poet writer Bhima Kavi's Basavaparana 1369, Singhiraj's Amala Basavacharai 1500, Vijayanagara minister Lakhana Dandesa's Shiva Tatwachindamani are some of the important sources. The cornerstone of Basavana's philosophy was, "...work worship is heaven," the rejection of mere worship of God and the acceptance of one's own body as a temple of God. Basavanna strongly advocated a life of complete commitment to work. As a poet, he finds a pride of place in Kannada literature. His deftly written poems end with the word, Kudasangama, which literally means, God of the confluence of two rivers. The poet's version of the god Shiva. About 1,300 such poems have survived, and have been described by H.S. Shiva Prakash as lyrical, satirical, deeply contemplative, and self critical. In one satirical poem, Basavanna decries the hypocrisy of a snake charmer and his wife, who on their way to find a bride for their son cancel the journey when they come across a bad omen, another snake charmer and his wife. Though Basavanna himself was a minister under the patronage of the king, some of his poems betray his contempt towards kingship and deep devotion to the god Shiva. A poem by Basavanna Alama Prabhu Alama, also known as Alama Prabhu lit. Alama the Master was a mendicant saint poet who took to the path of asceticism after the untimely death of his wife Kamalate. He was born into a family of hereditary temple performers and was himself an expert on the drum called Madale in Balagavi, a town of great antiquity in the Shivamaga district, Karnataka. Wandering around grief stricken by his wife's death, he came across a saint called Animaseya who initiated him into asceticism. Ascribed to a lama are 1,321 extant poems, each of which end with the word, Guasvara, lit, Lord of the Cave, a form of the god Shiva, for it is said a lama found enlightenment in a cave. A lama's cryptic poems, though full of kindness, are known for their satire, mockery, invective and rejection of siddhis occult powers. H. S. Shiva Prakash compares a lama's poems to the koans in Japanese Zen poetry. According to Dr. Nagaraj, Alama's mystic poems are in a category all of their own and do not qualify as bhakti poems, which are typically characterized by transparent devotion, while Basavanna's zeal and influence led to the formation and popularity of the Virashaiva movement in Kalyani, it was Alama who was the undisputed spiritual authority presiding over the gatherings of the devotees. Chamarasa, a well-known 15th-century Kannada writer in the court of Vijayanagara King Deva Raya II wrote Prabhulinga Lyal 1430, an account of the preachings and achievements of Alama. It was translated into the Telugu and Tamil languages at the behest of his patron king, and later into the Sanskrit and Marathi languages. In the story, Alama is considered an incarnation of the Hindu god Gunapati while Gunapati's mother, Parvati Shiva's consort, takes the form of a princess of Banavasi. A notable anthology called the Sannyasampadan, the achievement of nothingness, 1400, was compiled on the life of a lama and gives details about his interaction with contemporary saints. A poem by a lama Prabhu, Akka Mahadevi, prominent among the more than 30 women poets was Akka Mahadevi. Born to a merchant family in the town Udatadi or Udagani in the Shivamaga district, and possibly married against her wishes to a feudal chief called Kasaka, she renounced worldly pleasures, opting for a life of devotion and asceticism. She is often compared to other such notable female saint poets of Hinduism as Andal, Lalaswari, and Mira Bai, and is considered one of the prominent female poets of the Kannada language. The 430 short poems written by her, in a language that depicts her love for her divine lover. Chana Malakarjuna, lit. Beautiful Malakarjuna, a name for the god Shiva, and the 15th century anthology, the Sannyasampadan, are the main sources of information about her life. Her poetry is characterized by scorn for physical possessions and detachment from worldly affairs. A popular poem written by her describes the life of a silkworm which spins a cocoon, becomes entangled in the threads, and eventually dies because it cannot extricate itself. The silkworm is compared to a person and the silk threads, to worldly desires. In a poem of puns, the poet prays that her god, whom she describes as the Lord of Fragrant Jasmines, may cut through the cocoon of desires so she may become free like a butterfly. In addition to poetry, she is credited with two short writings, Mantragapiya and Yogingatravidi, the latter written in the native Tripadi meter, describing the various stages of spiritual enlightenment. 
Tradition has it that Akka Mahadevi preferred to wear no clothes, a form of renunciation which in her own words was the most exalted spiritual state. She died while still in her twenties in a plantain grove in the holy city of Sarisailam. A poem by Akka Mahadevi Other poets Basavanna's nephew, Chenabasava, is more popular as a strategist and a theologian. Apart from authoring some notable and lengthy vachana poems, he wrote on yogic experiences in a book called Mantragapya. He is known to have been the manager of the gatherings and the Mahaman great house of Basavanna. Credited to Siddharama, another influential devotee and a native of Sonalij modern Sholapur, Maharashtra, are writings in Tripadi meter and 1,379 extant poems though he has claimed authorship of 68,000 poems. His poems were influenced by Basavanna's ideology and convey rejection of blind beliefs, the caste system, and sexual discrimination. Artisan poets included Malaj Maraya, a woodcutter, Madhavala Machaya, a washerman, Ambije Chaudaya, a ferryman, Madhura Dulia, a cobbler, Hendata Maraya, a toddy tapper, Tarugahi Ramana, a cowherd, Kanadi Rematande, a mirror maker, and Ravana Siddha, a shepherd, as but a few in a long list of poets. Poets Dakya Bhamaya, Bahurupi Chaudaya, Kalakataya and Najya Maritande were ritual street performers and their poems reflect images from their trade. Several women poets made important contributions including, Basavanna's sister Nagalambike and his two wives, Gangambike and Nilambike, though Nilambike seems to have been the more prolific. Some female poets were wives of male poets in the Virashaiva congregation. Notable among them are Satyaka, whose poems compare in quality to those of Akka Mahadevi, Kelav, a Dalit poet, whose poems scorn at the upper caste people, Mahadevi and Lingama, who wrote poems in a mystic language, Amuj Rayama and Akama, who penned poems on the hypocrisy of religious pretenses, Kadir Rimava, a spinner, who employed a cryptic language called Badagu in her poems, and Muktiyaka, who is known for her debates with the patron saint Alama himself. Other names worthy of mention are Lakama, Ketaladevi, Gudavve and a princess called Bantadevi. Decline Challenging the very core of the caste-based society, the Virashivas conducted a marriage between an upper caste Brahmin bride and a lower caste Shudra groom. The resulting confrontation between rebellious Virashivas and the conservative upper classes lead to the assassination of King Bayala II and the eviction of most devotees, including Basavanna, from Kalyani. The successors of King Bayala II were weak, prompting Chalukya Someshvara IV, ruling from Anagari, to attempt rebuilding his empire by invading Kalyani in 1183. Though his invasion was successful, his overall efforts failed and the dynasty was ended by the Sunna rulers who drove Someshvara IV into exile in Banavasi in 1189. Though these turbulent events caused a setback to the Virashaiva gatherings and creation of poems, the movement had set roots in the Kannada soil and regained popularity in the 15th century under the patronage of the rulers of the Vijayanagara Empire. Literature after the Chalukyas The post-Chalukya period is characterized by the popularity of Shaiva and Vaishnava devotional writings, though secular and courtly topics written in native meters continued to flourish. Native meters in vogue were the Shatpadi six -line verse, the Tripadi, the Ragal rhymed couplets, and the Sangatya compositions meant to be sung to the accompaniment of musical instrument. Overall, Kannada writings began to change from Marga formal, due to Sanskritic influence to Desi, vernacular, and become more accessible to the common man, this change is apparent in the writings of the Hoysala court poets, some of whom are noted for pioneering works in native meters. The Virashiava poet Harihara, one of the most prominent poets of the medieval era, established the Rigali tradition with his biography of Basavanna Basavaraja Devara Rigali, 1160, the earliest available biography of the social reformer and of the Kannada language as well. His nephew Raghavanka established the Shatpati meter in his unique and original narration of the story of King Harishchandra called Harishchandra Kavya 1200. Sisamayana is credited with introducing a new composition called Sangatya 1232 in his allegorical poems Triparadahana, Burning of the Triple Fortress, and Anjaneshwarita, 
Some Jain authors continued the Shampu tradition, such as Jana, immortalized by his writing Yashodhara Charite a unique set of stories in 310 verses dealing with sadomasochism and transmigration of the soul. The earliest well-known Brahmin writers also emerged during the late 12th century and wrote on themes ranging from Vaishnava faith Rudrabhata's Jagannatha Vijaya, 1185, to secular treatises on poetics Kavi Kamas Shringara Ratnakara, on poetic sentiment and flavor. After the fall of the Kalachari Empire, the Vachana poetic tradition halted temporarily. However, by the 14th century, the Virashivas who held influential positions in the Vijayanagara Empire were exerting their influence, especially during the reign of King Deva Raya II or Prouta Deva Raya. Although this period is not as famous for the proliferation of the Vachana poems as the 12th century was, contemporary writers adopted the preachings of the saints and devotees of the bygone era and made them the protagonists of their writings. Having found a rallying point to spread their faith, they began an era of commentaries, anthologies and biographies. Famous among biographies were Bhimakavi's Basavapurana 1369, Singiraj's Mala Purana on the life of Basavana, Chimaris's Prabhulangalilai on the life of Allama Prabhu and Virapaksha Pandita's Chena Basavapurana an account of Chenabasava. Among a long list of anthologies, four versions of the Shinyasampadan are the most well-known. The first version, completed in 1400 by Shivaganaprasadi Mahadevaya, was written in the form of a dialogue between the protagonist, Saint Allama Prabhu, and other well-known Virashaiva devotees. Later versions were compiled by Halaj Arya Gumalapura Siddhalingayati and Gular Siddhaviranadaya Writing Vachana poems was popularized again from the mid-16th century, though Kannada language had to wait till the 17th century to discover its greatest modern poet in this genre. Sarvina lit. The All-Knowing, 16th or 17th century, a mendicant poet moralist and social reformer, left an indelible imprint on Kannada literature with his didactic poems, numbering about 2,100 in all. Written using the simple native tripadi meter to instruct the country folk, these poems cover a vast range of topics, from caste and religion to economics and administration, from arts and crafts to family life and health. Sarvina's poems constitute some of Kannada's most popular works. Four noted Brahmin writers of the Vijayanagara Empire, Kumara Vyasa, Timana Kavi, Kumara Valmiki and Chatu Vitalanada proliferated the shatpadi meter in their versions of the Hindu epics. Inspired by the Vachana writers who used the song prose medium to write their poems, the Haridasa poets used genres such as the kirthane musical compositions with two refrains, composition based on raga, or tune and tala, or rhythm, the saladi rhythm based, and the ugaboga melody based to convey their devotion to God. Their contributions to the South Indian classical music, Carnatic music is well acclaimed, Parandaradasa and Kanakadasa being the most popular poets of this cadre. Parandaradasa was the most prolific Haridasa poet who wrote in the Rigali meter and also earned the honorific Karnataka Sangeeta Patamaha, father of Carnatic music. Kanakadasa was versatile in many native meters. His Mohana Tarangini is in the Sangatya meter, Nalacharita and a book of morals for children called Haribhakti Sara are in the Shatpati meter. <laughs> Notes <laughs>